Kia ora, everybody! That means hello or goodbye in the local Maori language in New Zealand. I'm back! I've been away for three weeks. I've been out traveling. I guess some of you might not even have noticed since I have scheduled uploads. I did a shit ton of videos <laughs> and pretty much covered more or less most of the days at least that were gone. And things seems to have been doing, you know, going on all right. So yeah, I'm back again. And my English has not been, you know, become any better than before since I did. Oh, who stole the fucking phone? God damn it! Now I have to buy a new one. Two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and what did I say? Yeah, my English has not improved much since basically I didn't speak too much English. I, I wish I was. God, I can't speak at all. I was there with my family. Most of the time we spoke Swedish with each other. I didn't have much contact with, um, you know, the locals. I did listen a lot, but I didn't speak a lot to them. Um, but I still enjoy myself. As I said, I went away for three weeks over winter or Christmas and New Year. Um, and I will make a video about that. It was really great. We first went to Hong Kong and then Australia and last but not least New Zealand, both the North and the South Island. And New Zealand is beautiful and you have great beer as well. Yeah, I'll speak more about that. Um, so basically this, this video is more or less a little... Yeah, oops, penalty. Oh, come on, I want to take that one. And it's more or less a video to show that, hey, I'm back, I return, alive, <laughs> not in a box. That's great. Um, or as the Spartans return on their shields, if they were brave enough. They return without a shield. Yeah, they were fucking weaklings or something. <laughs> yeah. Or as at least I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah. Um, so, I basically this video is to, to show you that, hey, I'm live again. Yeah. yeah! I need to get into that. I need to <laughs> get into speaking, commentary, you know, making commentary again. And basically, I need to get back to where I were. Everything seems so strange. After three weeks, just check my cell phone. Um, I come back to my computer screen, and so it's like... Damn! It's big! Yeah! And it's <laughs> it's it's bright as well. It seems so so weird in a way. Yeah, it's so it feels so weird sitting in front of a real computer after three weeks not doing it at all. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it, I like it. Um basically what I want to talk about first we need something to talk about. I must talk about the what do call the flight trip home. It was the worst one ever. I'm not going to mention any company's names because, first of all, it doesn't really matter, and secondly, it's not. Yeah, uh, I don't want to, you know, feel that I'm cruel against someone because they're doing as good as they can. But basically, on the way home, um, as I said, I was on New Zealand the last last week, um, <clears throat> yeah! and for you who doesn't know that, that's about as far as you can get from Sweden and Europe. Basically, if, if you live in Sweden or in, in France or anything uh, anywhere in Central Europe, you can basically just look straight down, imagine that there's no earth, no, you know, molten core, nothing in the middle of earth. You can watch straight down and see New Zealand down below. It's it's basically down there. And it's kind of, <laughs> kind of odd to think about. I thought about it once I was there and damn, home is just right beneath me. Kind of a couple of thousand kilometers away something like that it's kind of a far far bit to travel yeah but anyway imagine a worse place to hear that your flight is cancelled maybe if you're you know on the moon or on Mars or something to hear that you know your flight home is cancelled sorry you have to stay here <laughs> that, that is probably the worst but except for that there's no worse place than being in the middle of the ocean on the other side of the earth so basically, yeah, things were going great. The entire trip was fantastic. And then the last day, it's like, oh, we're going home, finally. Going to the airport, no signs of any delays or anything like that. Everything's just great. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, and basically, they, they didn't even, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> they didn't even put up any delays until it was boarding time. And they, they were like, yeah, can you hold on a minute? And first of all, they said that, you know, okay, this flight is delayed one hour because of a problem with one of the motors, motor number four. Uh, so, 
want you to, to stick around a little bit and um, yeah, we'll give you some vouchers so you can go get yourself a coke or a beer or anything like that and just relax and we'll finish this. And then yeah, about yeah, one and a half hour later we went down to the terminal and they also said that you need to go to another terminal because this terminal is going to get, you know, there's another plane that's landing that needs access to this terminal so you have to take transfer buses out to your plane later on. So at that point it felt kind of a little bit insecure and about 10 minutes before it was time to, you know, um, meet again and get a update of the situation, our flight disappeared. You know, that you have these big monitors with all the flights and um, what called gates and boarding times and everything and <laughs> all the, you know, necessary information and <laughs> our flight disappeared. So that in that moment, my parents were like, "Yeah, uh, we're not going home tonight," uh, <laughs> but we still hoped. And then when we got down there, <coughs> the company was like, "Yeah, um, your flight is is cancelled. Sorry." So we'll have to, you know, um, <coughs> we'll have to take you to the terminal, or take you back, and and give you all your luggage back, and we have to check you out again of the airport, and you have to stay at a hotel for the night, and. The, Air company did pay for the hotel, so um, that's good at least. So we got a free night at a, at a quite nice hotel in New Zealand. I liked it a lot. Uh, so it wasn't the end of the world, but it was kind of annoying actually. You know, once you're traveling in New Zealand or Australia, you have this what do you call it? A, a card that you have to fill in, declare a declaration that you don't bring in any unnecessary food or. Um, anything like that, you know, you know, can't bring animals, you can't bring food, you can't bring water, you can't even f bring fucking seashells or anything, almost. Um, you don't get a fine as long as you declare it, but you risk to lose it if you're not careful. You have to declare if you have jogging shoes with you. That's how, you know, what do you call it? How fucking picky they are. <laughs> it takes like 20 minutes to fill a card in. You have to write in all your personal information. You know your passport number, where you're heading, where you came from, and everything like that. So when you're going into New Zealand, you have to finish one of those cards and give it away once you arrive. So basically, we did that when we first came to New Zealand one week earlier, and after that, we also have to declare, you know, write a little card once you're leaving the country, telling them that you're leaving. I don't know why, but they said that you know you have to do that. Yeah. Um. So we did that, and then. Once you know we were going into the counter again from the airport, I'm banned actually. That's kind of weird, but sure. Um, yeah, we were going into the counter again from the airport. We had to send one of those fucking cards again. I said, "What the hell? What are we bringing out of this fucking country? Can't remember. Now I have to bring it in again." Uh, luckily though, they kind of did realize that okay, we 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 shouldn't really bother with them <laughs> too much. Passengers, you know, all of us, all of us want to get home, and you know, being told that you you don't you can't go. Sorry, uh, that's kind of you're not too happy, basically. Uh, so when we came to the, we call the the, we call it the um, oh, we call it the tool, the customs in English. Yeah, we call it tool in Swedish, and the customs, and they were like, yeah, so you're from the, uh, cancel flight. Yep. Okay. Just pass by. So they, they kind of realized that it's kind of hard <laughs> to smuggle something into the country if you haven't even been aboard abroad. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, yes, yes, move on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we lost a day there. We had to go to the hotel. The next day we returned. Oh, that's a weak shot, but I did score. Oh, I have to can't forget. Yeah, yeah the next day we, we actually managed to leave New Zealand. So they were like, you know, they had to rebook all flights, rebook all the connection flights and everything. So they were like, okay, um, you were supposed to go to Hong Kong and then to Paris and then to Stockholm. Yes. Okay. We, you can't do that anymore because basically, since you're, since we cancelled your flight, you you missed your connection flight. <coughs> but we can fly you to Beijing and then Stockholm. And we're like, yeah, let's get us home, please. So they say, yeah, we'll, we'll arrange that. Great. And then we flew to Hong Kong and they actually checked in all of our luggage so yeah, we didn't have a, a chance to, to pick it up again once in Hong Kong so we thought that you know we're going directly from Hong Kong to Beijing so we can go home but we, once we got there they're like no um, you'll have to stay at a 
hotel for yet another night. We're like, what? <laughs> you told us we're going straight to to Beijing. Yeah, but that you know the boarding to that flight is in twelve hours. So I'm sorry, but you have to to stay at the hotel another night. So then we were really really angry. But they took us to what's the name of the hotel? The um, so one of those more luxurious hotels. It's not the Ritz. It's not you know the Hilton. It's Marriott. Yeah, the Marriott Hotel in Hong Kong. Fucking nice. <laughs> so they gave us, you know, free dinner, free yet another night in Hong Kong, um, and those beds was like sleep, you know, sleeping in a dream or something, kind of weird, dreamception. And they, you know, they had a buffet with food from all around the world. They had a fucking luxurious, what do you call it, dessert table, um, in which you ate dessert from, obviously. They get a chocolate fountain and everything. It was so god and sweet. We were really, really happy that night. Yet, even though we had to spend another night at hotel. Um, but it was a good hotel, so we were pleased. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was good. The next morning we flew early to Hong Kong. Basically, to do that we had to change you know, the airline company to... We flew, I uh, don't want to tell their names because they messed up, I mean, you shouldn't judge them. But we changed to Air China to get us home. So we came to their, their check-in desk. Our luggage were already checked in, so it was probably already on the plane um, before we even checked in ourselves. Once we came there, they're like, yeah, we can take you to Beijing, as, as um, the other company said yesterday. So that we no problem at all. Um, but the you know flight from Beijing to Stockholm is overbooked so we're not sure we can take you on that one we're like what what the hell what are you serious we were told we're, you know we'll go home we can't stay in this fucking you know, country I mean China's not a fucking country but it's kind of a bad country in, in most ways to be honest and uh, so they were like no but we, we're not sure if we can take you on the flight you, you have a visa for China we were like, no, nope, we do not. And they're like, oh, okay. So you heard already there that they want us, wanted us to, to stay yet another night on a hotel. Um, but since we didn't have any visa for the country, we weren't allowed to actually leave the airport. So they couldn't, you know, they basically couldn't, <laughs> couldn't put us on a hotel uh, another night. So they actually managed to, to fix the tickets once again. So... Um, we finally, after many ifs and buts, as you say in Swedish, we actually got our tickets to go home. So we flew to Beijing, kind of an, yeah, okay flight, or, yeah, not too bad. And, yeah, <laughs> basically, once we came to Beijing, you had to go to the, through, we just, you know, making a, a international, what do you call it, transit from one flight to another. Yet, we had to do some kind of fucking immigration stuff. We had to go through some sort of a passport control to get from our terminal into some sort of a middle area. And from that area, we once again had to go through another passport control to get <laughs> to, to the new terminal without even entering the, the country. There was, uh, you know, there was a queue for an hour. We queued for more than an hour yes, to 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 walk from one basically almost one gate to another we were like what the fuck are they serious we were so god and tired just want to get home and they were like no nope, no nope, you have to come through here we need to check your passport three times not one time not two times but three times we have to give you a fucking stomp and everything it was nice I got a stomp in Australia I got a stomp in New Zealand and I got a stomp in China without even basically entering the country <laughs> yet they gave us stamps so yeah that like I mean I like stamps you don't get any when you're traveling in Europe since I'm a member of the European Union um, <clears throat> so it was nice getting one I must say uh, but still it was kind of annoying yeah so once we came to the last disc we're like okay let's board this fucking plane let's get home and let's never travel again so we had our tickets and everything, and on the back side we had sort of a, a ticket-looking thing from the old air company. 
you know, ensuring that we um, were transferred to the, to, you know, to Air China and that all the taxes and everything were included in the new tickets so they wouldn't bother us with that. So we came, we come to the last, you know, once you're boarding the plane, <coughs> basically. And the air hostess, she's like, oh, yeah, great, there's your ticket. She noticed that the, the sort of transfer thing is, is stuck on the back side of the ticket. She's like, okay, hold on a minute. She's looking at it and she's like, what, what's, what's this? Um, she's looking for a long, long time. She tells, tells us, you know, everyone's, <laughs> everyone else is, is walking on, walking on, on board the plane, boarding the plane. She took us aside and let us wait. She's like, um, yeah, so hold on just a second. She looks at the tickets for like three minutes and then she calls, um, yeah, and then she calls someone. She calls yet another one. And after like eight minutes or ten minutes, she's like, so this airplane ticket is not for this company. But we're like, yeah, 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 yes it is. But And then she pointed to the one on the back side. And then we said that that's not a ticket. It's just, you know, they printed, it's kind of a recipe, recipe on a on a ticket looking thing you know those kind of small yeah you the boarding passes basically it's, it was a boarding pass in which they wrote that they had transferred us and that all taxes were paid and everything and that we shouldn't really be bothered and <laughs> after 10 minutes she asks us are you going on this flight or are we going and then we explain we came from hong kong we have the ticket we have our seats and we want to basically board the plane, yes, get home, we don't want to do this anymore, leave us, leave us be, just can sit in the fucking luggage room or on the toilet, just take us home. So after 10 minutes, she she didn't ask us, you know, straight away, she asked us after 10 minutes, after calling, you know, basically maybe the headquarters, she took photos of those uh, boarding passes and sent them to someone to look at them. Um, <laughs> And after 10 minutes she asked us, so you came here from Hong Kong? Yes, we came here with your company from Hong Kong and now we're going home with your Hong Kong. You know, your Hong Kong. Ah, your company. I can't speak English as you hear. Even though I just messed up Hong Kong and company in the same, yeah. Yeah! Um, and basically, she's like, oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, she saw our tickets. Our valid tickets and everything. Yet she, she had to <laughs> check everything three times and call several people and then we had to explain she didn't ask us to explain straight away and uh, so after 10 minutes she's like oh okay i see so your flight were cancelled okay you were transferred to our company and you're going home yeah that's what we said basically maybe not but if we felt like it she's like okay yeah i have to check this again and then she called like, you know a couple more calls and then she's like Oh, I'm so sorry that I bothered you. Oh, please, please, go aboard. We were like, thank you. <laughs> we almost cried out of happiness. Um, and I've never felt so good. Basically, most of the time, I'm not scared of flying, but you know, you always get a little bit nervous once you board a plane. Yeah! But that time, the whole family just sat down and was like, Ah, we're done. We're done with this crap. It felt so good to know that the plane were going straight to Orlando, uh, you know, the, the airport in Stockholm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we felt we felt so fucking finished, so we were pleased. Yeah. <laughs> I never felt better, almost, after those 48 hectic hours. I think we were only actually about 28 or 30 hours late home, but it's still too much. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my little air trip. Um, whatever you call it, history, uh, the the worst fucking air trip ever. And my English is not good either. I'm sorry for that. As I said, I've been away for three weeks, and two and a half out of those were in English-speaking countries. But um, I didn't think it really practice my English too much. I'm sorry. So it's basically gotten worse. Hopefully I will recover. Hopefully I will get better again. Yeah. So maybe we can talk about some other things in the end. Uh, I most of all I just want to forget that fucking flight trip. Uh, <laughs> just chaos through and through. Um, yeah. 
But as I said, um, some other things. Day Z or Day Z just got released. Um, you know, as a standalone, standalone game, not just a mod for Arma 2. It's a standalone based on the Arma 3 engine, as I've heard it. And my friend, let's play Minesweeper, that I've played some games with before on this channel. And he said, like, well, you have to play that game. And I was like, yeah, we do. So we are going to play it. Hopefully I'll, you know, convince him to record some stuff with me. Um, we'll see about that. But, yeah, it will be real fun. Hopefully I'll put up some videos from it. Uh, I have some, some plans. I don't know. Maybe, basically, I'll just mess around. Hopefully, hopefully it will be good enough. Good enough for you, good enough for me, good enough for everyone, yes indeed. Also, I got actually two invitations from people, um, or actually basically gaming companies asking me to play their games yeah! on my channel and I feel that kind of feels like a step in the right direction. Um, a lot of developers, especially, they're, they're small ones, it's not like Rockstar comes and play GTA 6 for us or something, or Red Dead Redemption 2. Or anything like that, no. <laughs> they would never do anything like that. Or would they? If you're from Rockstar and if you want me to, to play your new game, feel free to tell me. Sure. Um, it would be great. Yeah. But basically, I got two companies that are really small. I haven't heard of them before, but they basically wrote private messages to me and asked me, you know, would you want to play our game? One of them gave me a closed beta code. I'm going to ask them first. I mean, I don't want to put up any videos from a closed beta that if, if I'm not even allowed to do so I don't know so I have to ask them first and you know solve those things and the other company yeah said you know take a look at our demo our demo if you want to um, and we'll see what happens from there so that felt really good and um, so I'll hop straight and do that I will record some more uh, papers please as well because that series got kind of popular actually um, and that's nice I like it Look at this horse, even though he, he, he has done nothing for the last three weeks, he's... Ah, oh, great, sweet, he, he's, he's, you know, he's just been standing for three weeks, then I get home, he wins directly, that's great. I guess the save file doesn't really recognize that I've been away for three weeks, but still. <laughs> yeah, um, so I got some suggestions to play games, feels great, I want to do that, yes, I want to race the horse as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to it actually, and you'll see some videos from it. I will, in the beginning of, beginning of the videos, I will point out that this is, you know, I was asked to do this, and I will do that. Um, yeah, I won't get paid though, no, that's kind of obvious. <laughs> but I mean, it makes sense, small companies just, um, you know, getting maybe 10 more people or 50 more people to watch the game. Um, that might be a difference for them uh, obviously um, to get exposure to get more views to get more interest in the game uh, I play game dev tycoon I know how it is yeah um, but basically yeah that's what I want to, to say right now I've been recording this for, for quite a while actually and um, I will upload this tonight and then we'll record some other stuff and we'll see what happens uh, hopefully you've had a nice Christmas and a nice New Year's Eve and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you if you celebrate those stuff, those things. I know for a fact because I was in Beijing, they are about to celebrate uh, the Chinese New Year. I think it's January 19th or something. It's quite soon. Um, I saw some commercial for it. So yeah, Happy New Year to you as well. If you're watching this from China, I think I got two or three views from China in total. So maybe not. Um, except for that. Yeah, um, if you're Jewish, happy Hanukkah, whenever you celebrate that. The Muslims, yeah, happy new year. I feel kind of bad though, I don't know too much about Islam. That's a shame. Um, I have to, to check some things out. I know though that you are about 800 years or 600 years after our, you know, it's 2013 here, I think it's about year 1400, if you're counting the Islam calendar, because you count the birth of, uh, I don't know, Muhammad or something. <laughs> oh, please don't hate me. <laughs> I might be ignorant, but I'm not stupid or evil or angry or anything like that. Um, but anyway, have a great time. I'll see you all around the next time. Hopefully, as I said, then I'll talk more about the travel, more about the countries I visited and everything like that. Um, yeah, I'll see you all around. Have a nice time, everybody. Goodbye.